Hello, this is Ian Henry of Auto Analysis. Welcome to the September edition of the European Car and Light Commercial Vehicle Production Outlook from the SMMT. Our outlook shows falling vehicle production across much of Europe, although the UK shows continued growth. The German premium brands are broadly stable in volume terms, and they also have rise in production outside Germany. The Koreans and most Japanese are also growing, but there are problems at the traditional volume brands, all of which have severe problems, and we think PSA, Fiat, Ford, Opel and Renault are facing long-run decline. In 2012, production, including Russia, should be broadly unchanged in volume terms and actually increased by about 3 or 4% in 2013. However, taking Russia out, European production falls by around half a million in 2012 and around 700,000 in 2013, highlighting the scale of the problem facing European automakers. Our base outlook. This is summarised in the chart which follows. Overall, it shows a rise in production, mainly due to production increases in Russia. The European market will not collapse in the short term because actually there is going to be some growth in the Czech Republic, in Hungary, Romania, Slovakia and the UK. But there will be significant long-term loss in production in both France and Spain. And by 2016 we expect France will be as much as 25% down on 2007 volume and in Spain it will be down by around 20% over the same period. There will be a short-term fall in Germany due to decline at Ford and Opel and various model cycle effects at Audi and Mercedes. But by 2016 this will be made up and we think that Germany will be at least 7% up on 2007 volumes, over 6 million vehicles. And throughout the period covered by this outlook, there will be a continued eastward shift in production. During this time, Czech production will rise over 50%, Hungarian production will more than double, Romanian production will almost double, and Slovakia will also record significant increases. And here we see on this chart those figures summarised graphically and you can see how Germany in blue continues to dominate the market but you can also see the growing importance of Russia which is the turquoisey colour about halfway up the chart. Looking at the relative importance of different countries we detail this in the chart here. Germany certainly remains the largest producer of over 6 million vehicles a year in the long run. We've excluded Germany uh, to make the scale slightly easier to uh, manage. But Russia will rise to become the number two producer in Europe. UK and Spain will vie for the number three spot and France is likely to remain somewhere behind in fourth place. Long-term Spanish production is actually going to be aided by the, the presence there of Volkswagen with the Polo, Audi with the Q3, Opel with the Corsa, and the emerging markets models which are going to be made by PSA. Italy will remain well behind both the Czech Republic and Turkey, and could even fall behind quite a long way if exports to the US fail to live up to expectations, or, as is now possible, production of Alfa Romeo and some Jeeps moves from Fiat in Italy to North America. And also there will be the continued eastward shift in production, as we've noted, and this is highlighted here with the accelerating importance of the Czech Republic, Romania and Slovakia in this chart. Now what we show here is the European outlook to 2016, including Russia, total volumes, but with uh, some additional scenarios on top of the base outlook. Now our earlier outlooks in 2012 had shown assumed a steady recovery in the short term but we now think this is most unlikely. Our best case outlook which is the blue line, the dark blue, is for a broadly similar 2012 and 2013 with the recovery from 2014 but even this is largely driven by Russia. Some alternative scenarios which are detailed in the main report which you can access from the SMT website assume a greater dip in 2012 with variations in certain markets and a slower and shallower recovery from 2013. Now in this chart we take Russia out and the picture is actually rather less attractive. You can see that overall the volumes are much lower first of all and secondly the scale of the decline is deeper. Scenarios 1 to 3 incidentally assume a fall of between 1 and 5 percent in the major markets above and beyond the fall which is inherent in our base outlook. But we have to ask the question what if things were even worse? In recent m months, Renault and Volkswagen executives in particular have been talking about expecting very tough times ahead and stagnation in Europe at best in the next few years. So what might that look like in terms of volumes? Well, here we have the base outlook. The blue line includes Russia, the pink line excludes Russia. And then we have three, if you like, worst-case scenarios. The details behind these scenarios are also detailed in our main report. But if you look at scenarios five and six, they involve what might happen with an accelerated decline in 2012 and 13 and an even slower recovery than projected in our base outlook. And the reason for showing this is to ask the question what would happen in the long run to European production if 
excluding Russia, less than 18 million vehicles a year were made in Europe. This is a question which the industry has to consider. Here in the UK, the vehicle manufacturers have continued to invest strongly. We saw multiple good news announcements from Mini, Nissan and JLR in 2011, and also positive moves by GM and Toyota. And this story continued in 2012, with Nissan confirming two new models, Jaguar Land Rover confirming expansion at Halewood, and also confirming that the F-Type will be launched at the Paris Motor Show, with more models to come. GM has committed to Ellesmere Port in the long term, which will actually be the lead plant for their new Astra. Our Honda is now nearing completion of recent investment program at Swindon. Toyota is about to start the new Aris and is centralising Aris production in the UK. The UK also benefits from the fact that the majority of cars made in the UK are only made here and are made for global markets, not just the UK and also not just Europe. This reinforces the industry strength here in the UK and of the importance of UK factories to the various vehicle manufacturers' global outlooks. Most models and manufacturers here have export ratios of over 80%, some as high as 90%. But we have to ask the question, can the supply base that is here in the UK actually meet demand from increased vehicle production? As noted at the beginning of this video, the vehicle manufacturers are facing severe challenges in Europe, and they are now doing more than just talk about restructuring, they are actually doing something about it. At the Geneva Motor Show, the head of Fiat, Sergio Marchioni, spoke about the vehicle manufacturers working together in this regard, but we wonder whether that would really be possible and whether it would be allowed by the EU. PSA certainly recognised it needed to change its manufacturing footprint, it's closing one plant, it's cutting back on another, and we think there will be more change to come. GM is closing one more plant at Bochum, and we think there will be more changes there as well. Ford has recently admitted that it has to adjust its footprint to meet demand. Fiat has actually yet to follow the prescription proposed by Marchioni, so it would be interesting to see what happens at Fiat in the next few months. And what will Renault do? Will the French government actually allow domestic plants to close? And while all this is affecting the volume manufacturers, we have the unusual position of the German premium brands of Volkswagen, JLR, Nissan and the Koreans appearing to continue to grow, unaffected by the wider economic turmoil. And the Daimler CEO Dieter Zetsch has even recently claimed the Mercedes does not have enough capacity. That's why it's had to add extra production in Hungary for the A-Class and also take on Valmetus Finland to make some A-Class models for it as well. If we go back to 2008-9, when the previous recession and downturn hit, most analysts, myself included, thought the major plant closures and significant European restructuring would take place at that time. And although some change has occurred since then, that change has mostly been in North America, especially at GM and Chrysler. In Europe and Japan, the vehicle manufacturers have, by and large, slowed plants, cut shifts, and done all they can to avoid plant closures. A few European plant closures actually took place in the immediate aftermath of the 2008 collapse. Only GM Antwerp and Fiat Sicily, followed slightly later by the collapse of Saab and the recently announced closure of Mitsubishi in the Netherlands, are a direct result of the 2008 collapse. But if demand continues to fall or even remains at existing subdued levels, it's highly unlikely that volume vehicle manufacturers could resist further closures. We think there will be more to come. So yes, we do think change is coming. European sales will be down again this year, the fifth year in succession. Exports beyond Europe will be even more essential for the vehicle manufacturers to maintain output. We wonder, will this be enough? We think it's unlikely. And as we've noted, the vehicle manufacturers are now publicly talking about closing factories. GM's plant at Bochum will go, but we have to ask will there be more cutbacks at GM. PSA is stopping vehicle production at Aulnay near Paris and is implementing a severe cutback at Rennes. And there is continued uncertainty about the Madrid plant. But what will happen at re in terms of restructuring at F Fiat, Ford and Renault? Can they avoid plant closures, especially if demand falls further? We think that the Fiat Casino plant in southern Italy is especially vulnerable, and we know that Ford's production footprint is under review right now. One of the reasons why the vehicle manufacturers are having to look at their existing manufacturing footprints is because the pressure on what we regard as the marginal plants are actually intensifying because since 2008 we've actually seen increased investment in new plants, Renault Dacia Morocco for example, Mercedes Hungary. We've seen expansion of existing plants, e.g. BMW Germany and Audi at Hungary and Fiat Tofash in Turkey. And there's been refurbishment elsewhere, Fiat Serbia, Renault Spain, Ford Romania. And everyone is charged into Russia, with new plants and alliances under the new decree 166 taking place. Toyota is just the latest to announce the expansion in Russia, and Mazda has also joined the Russian production stampede.
plus outside Europe, the localization of European vehicle manufacturers production continues. And this in the long run could actually hit European production as some export markets become off limits. Volkswagen will make the Passat and Audi will make the Q5 in North America. That could shut off export markets from Germany. And there are increased shifts now by the German VMs in South Africa too. Continued expansion in China by most of the vehicle manufacturers, especially at Volkswagen and PSA. We wonder will the Chinese authorities also demand export market access for the new Chinese factories, and what would be the impact of that if that were to happen on Europe? In conclusion, the recovery in production in Europe has been delayed till at least 2014, maybe 2015, depending on the scale of the downturn we see in the next year or so. However, here in the UK, amongst the German premium brands and at the Koreans, this trend has been largely bucked. One example of this is BMW, which has reported another month of record sales in August. However, there are serious problems for the traditional European volume brands. And the decline in PSA sales has led to a decline in its share price, and in turn this has led to it being removed from the leading French stock market share index, the CAC40. Circumstances certainly seem right for change at the volume vehicle companies, but can they afford the costs of structural change, which are significant? Closing Bochum alone will cost around a billion euros. Will they restructure? Well, they've avoided large-scale action until now. However, GM and PSA have blinked first and will close plants. Fiat's CEO is talking a good talk, but will he walk the walk? Will he close a plant in Italy? Or will national governments ride to national champions rescue yet again, or has the money run out? Will the French government, for example, allow Renault to close plants in France, or will Renault close plants in Spain instead? Thank you for listening. You can see the details on the screen now of how you can access the full report, and we hope you do so, and we also hope to hear from you with any views and comments. Thank you. Until next time, goodbye.